Welcome back to the Parkinson's Doctor channel. This is Dr. Ramon Rodriguez, a neurologist and Parkinson's disease specialist at the Neurology One Clinic in Orlando, Florida. And today I actually will take some time to answer some of the comments or questions that some of you uh, have been uh, writing or contributing to uh, to the videos in the forum. And, uh, and, and I really appreciate that you're making these comments because it helps me understand uh, this, the experiences that other people with Parkinson's disease are having. So let's go ahead and get into this. So we can do this in a manner that uh, you will be able to learn a little bit more about uh, the challenges happening with Parkinson's disease. In first place, I want you to understand that this is medical information. You know, I, I, I am speaking about my experience as a Parkinson's disease specialist. However, I am not telling you what you have to, to do. I'm not giving you medical advice for that. You have to go to your doctor, make sure, make sure that you share with them uh, the problems that, that you're having so they can help you and give you the best therapy. So to begin, these are the two comments that I will be uh, discussing uh, today. Number one is my doctor said I have the best type of Parkinson's. And the second one is my loved one with Parkinson's disease had DBS but has not shown much benefit. So let's begin with the first comment, right? My doctor said I have the best type of Parkinson's disease. So what does this really mean? So, you know, I, I, I think that in this particular case, what the doctor meant that you have what we call idiopathic Parkinson's disease. And, and once again, I think that every, every third video or every second video will be speaking about Parkinson's disease and also about Parkinson's plus syndromes or a typical Parkinson's disease. So, you know, remember that that people with Parkinson's disease, idiopathic Parkinson's disease, are those patients that uh, typically uh, demonstrate a robust benefit to, to, to levodopa, that is the main medication used. We also have other medicines such as dopamine agonists, ropinol, pramipexol. We combine with other medicines such as entagapon or, or picapon, and, and, and there's a medication called amantadine. But the main drug that we use in Parkinson's disease to this date is, is levodopa, and that comes in multiple uh, uh, formulations, just the, the regular ye yellow pill, um, or, or it comes in the form of uh, uh, Ritari, which is the long-acting formulation. In, in other countries, instead of carbidopa, levodopa is levodopa uh, benzeroside. So it's, it's just a little bit uh, different, but the levodopa continues to be the, the main constant. So... People with Parkinson's disease typically respond to, to, to carbidopa, levodopa. And, and if you have Parkinson's disease, and at least you have a medicine that uh, is going to help you improve your, your symptoms and improve your quality of life. So that would be, uh, you know, that might be considered a better situation compared to having a Parkinsonian syndrome that uh, does not seem to be improving with uh, with, with levodopa, right? So so probably that's what your doctor means. And, and, and remember that there's people with Parkinson's disease that will take carbidopa, levodopa. They typically show benefit to the medication. But on the other side, we have people with atypical Parkinson's or a typical Parkinsonism or secondary Parkinsonism. You see, there are multiple names for this um, for these entities. And, and, and they all mean that they are not the true Parkinson's disease. And they are not tr the true Parkinson's disease because they do not show the same benefit to, to, to carbidopa, levodopa in first place. Uh, there are some other differences. For example, uh, Parkinson's disease typically moves a little bit slower compared to this other uh, uh, condition. And this other atypical syndrome, there are, there are multiple of them. So they will have their own challenges that will differentiate them from, from idiopathic Parkinson's disease. So, so once again, I think that when your doctor said that uh, you have the best type of Parkinson's, probably what your doctor means is um, that, that, you know, you have idiopathic Parkinson's disease, that carbidopa, levodopa should be able to help your symptoms, and the typical progression of the symptoms is typically slower compared to these other uh, uh, Parkinson's plus syndromes. Now, let's, let's go ahead. I'm just going to make a quick stop here. Uh, so that I can define uh, what is going on. Why this Parkinson's versus a typical Parkinson's and why the confusion, right? And what happened is that most of these conditions, and I'm speaking about the Parkinsonian syndrome, they have similar symptoms. Remember that to this day, we do not have a blood 
test commercially available. I know that uh, there's a biomarker that uh, was in the news very recently uh, from the Michael J. Fox Foundation and the and, and, and one of the uh, major studies that they have been working on. But up to now, commercially available that I can order as a physician on my patients, I do not have any blood tests and I do not have anything that would help me confirm that a person has Parkinson's disease, idiopathic Parkinson's disease. Not the MRI, not the DAT scan, not the medicine, not the blood test. Today, and this is uh, May 30 of 2023, there is no diagnostic test that will tell me with 100% certainty that a person, in fact, is having Parkinson's disease. Now, people with Parkinson's disease, they have tremors, they can have a stiffness, they can have balance problems, they can have a slowness and rigidity. And what happens is that people with this atypical Parkinson's or secondary Parkinsonism, they have the same symptoms. They may have tremors, they may have stiffness, slowness, trouble walking, right? So how we differentiate one from the other? Well, everything depends on the evolution of the symptoms in first place. And second, how that person responds to carbidopa, levodopa. So that's what 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 this means. That's why it is so difficult because in the early stages, everybody looks the the same. Obviously, you know, with some expertise, you might be able to begin differentiating one condition from the other. But typically in the early stages, everybody looks like they have Parkinson's disease. And actually every doctor, you know, if, if in fact the person is Parkinsonian, you know, probably uh, Parkinson's disease may be the, the condition that will have the slowest progression and their sole benefit with the medicine. So, so it might be the best type to have if you're going to have one of these conditions. So let's go ahead and move on to the next question. And it is my loved one with Parkinson's disease had DBS, but has not shown much benefit. And the truth is that, you know, this is my life on a daily basis, right? I see people with uh, Parkinson's disease and Parkinsonian syndrome. They come to the clinic, they had deep brain stimulation surgery, and they're coming just to get an opinion because they were expecting the DBS to to be the, the solution for all the problems that they were having, right? And the truth is that the answer to these questions has to be uh, answered from, from, from multiple aspects, right? Multiple areas. So in first place, you know, did the person really have idiopathic Parkinson's disease, right? You know, those are the cases that typically will improve with uh, carbidopa, levodopa. And, and sometimes... A person is Parkinsonian. They might have a secondary Parkinsonism. They are not improving with the medicine just because of the frustration. They said, well, you know, if the medicine is not helping, let's move on to the surgery, right? And if that person, unfortunately, did not have the opportunity to evaluate, uh, uh, you know, have an evaluation with a neurologist with expertise in Parkinson's, Parkinsonism, atypical Parkinson's, and DBS to help them understand what will be expected with the surgery, then some of these people will end up having deep brain stimulation surgery. And the problem is that if they are not improving with the levodopa, with the exception of the tremors, right? That's something that is going to improve. But if they are not improving with uh, levodopa, I will not expect to see much benefit uh, with the uh, with uh, uh, deep brain stimulation surgery. Now, the other thing is, what are the expectations, right? So, we know that DBS is very good for tremors, it's very good for stiffness, it's very good for slowness, but if a person is going to have deep brain stimulation surgery because they are having a lot of balance issues, right? So we can really cannot guarantee DBS to improve all those balance issues. Uh, if a person is depressed, so DBS might not help with that depression. If the patient has a lot of fatigue and low energy and they're expecting DBS just to give them that jolt of energy to get going, Unfortunately, DBS is not going to, to help with that. So, so once again, having an evaluation with uh, a uh, neurologist for this that has experience with deep brain simulation surgery will be able to help you predict what to expect from the, from the surgery and to understand better what you can expect in the future. So sometimes I actually see people that have improved a lot with DBS surgery, but the symptom that they wanted to improve did not get better, right? You know, they, they were tired all the time, they had fatigue, and that did not change with the surgery. So in that case, the surgery will be seen as a failure. So it is critical for you to have 
the conversation with your doctor about what is it that you're expecting from the surgery. In, in second place, some people will have, uh, actually, and, and I forgot to mention this, but some people will have uh, surgery and they are only on the deep brain stimulation and they have some benefit, but people still with DBS surgery will need uh, to take medicines, right? And, and many people think that they will be able to stop taking the medications that they were taking before. And the truth is that the best combination is, is the combination of surgery plus the deep brain stimulation surgery for maximum benefit. So once again, you know, make sure that before the surgery, that will be the best time. You have this conversation with your doctor to know what to expect in the future and, and what can DBS do for you. It is a great procedure, but you have to understand it very well before you make the decision about uh, DBS. And please, please, please make sure that you see a, a DBS specialist to give you uh, uh, the best advice before undergoing uh, DBS surgery. Thank you so much again for, for your attention. I really appreciate uh, uh, your comments and I appreciate uh, all of you that have uh, subscribed to the channel. And uh, I will continue bringing uh, other subjects. I will be speaking actually about the particular types of uh, uh, atypical Parkinsonism. So we'll be discussing them one by one for you to understand them better. And I will be sharing with you some of the main challenges that we see in our movement disorders clinic. You know, some of the uh, symptoms and problems that people are bringing because many times other other people like you might be able to, to correlate either you or your loved one, right? So I believe that uh, there will be a great benefit from sharing the experiences of other people as well. Thank you very much. And I look forward to, uh, to hear from you and, and see your comments. Thank you.